gods, please help me as nothing seems to be working for this bird's nest of a bun. Oh my, have you guys ever seen my bun this giant? I kind of like it. Okay, you can't really see what's going on. I have to like show it off for a second. What do we think? Thoughts? Yay, nay, I don't know. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I have a luxury hit list and worst list compiled all in one. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna share with you if I only could pick one item, just one, I'm gonna really do my best to not be like, and I also like this and this and this and this, and this because this is not about one brand, it's about 10 brands. They are all luxury. And if I could pick one to keep in my collection and that's it, these would be the 10 items. And then I was thinking, well, that's kind of just a favorites video, like a best luxury video. And so we went a little deeper and I was doing my research and I was looking at every single brand and finding the favorite. And I also found the one product that maybe I would personally just kind of, you know, get rid of if it were my brand, but it's not. And also there are personal reasons as to why particular items I don't jive with, they don't work for me they work for plenty of other people. Like, you know, makeup is so personal. I always, always, always say that. But basically this is my best and very worst from 10 luxury brands. Okay, so we're gonna start with Sicily because I feel like that's the most bougie, top shelf, way expensive brand that I have in front of me altogether. So I wanna start with the way overpriced primer. This is a great primer for hydration, smoothing the skin. It has a slight blurring effect, but it does really help your foundation to just glide right on and wear gorgeously. I always have a good skin day, makeup day whenever I use this primer. It's tears from an angel. It, I don't know what is in here that is so gosh darn expensive, but it is spendy. So I don't use this all the time. This is not my first bottle. I've purchased anything from Sicily myself. That's not one that you get on the PR list, so let me say that. I love a lot of their skincare. The Black Rose is so just yummy and good. But as far as makeup goes, this is the one item that I do super love that I actually feel like if you're someone that's obsessed with skin, skincare, skin makeup, and you wanna splurge on a luxury item, this is really, really beautiful. As far as the one item that I don't like from Sicily, it would be their loose powder. Take one quick moment and flash back to my story time of purchasing it in Vegas and coming back and feeling like my lungs had just been dusted in loose powder and that feeling of like coughing and coughing and irritation lasted so long. It's just like so micro fine, super expensive and it's spicy to breathe in. I don't know, I've used like a lot of loose powder over the years and that particular one was just like, I needed to run out of the room and be like, <laughs> like save me. Like it was just like, it, there was something in there. I don't understand what it is, but it just irritated me. The look of it was kind of like, oh, it's loose powder, like not worth all of my cash. So that would be the one that I'd be like, bye. Uh, speaking of powder that I really love, Huda Beauty powder is my favorite. I keep going back and forth between the Laura Mercier, which I really love. Cody would be like the drugstore option. The Magic Star setting powder, love that as well. But the one that I'm dipping in the very, very most where every single time I wear it, it just kind of settles and melds with my skin and doesn't look overly powdery, but I'm able to bake with it is the Huda Beauty powder. This is in pound cake. I super love it. As far as what I don't really like from Huda, I have two. Oh, I'm breaking the rules already. I don't do well with her lashes just because I feel like my eyes are too small and it just like swallows them whole and there's just something about the feeling of the lashes that don't work out for me. But also the highlighting palettes, I have never had a good time with. They always accentuate a lot of texture. I don't like the color setup. I feel like it's clunky and a little bit large. And I love so much from Huda's line. I think so much is beautiful. Okay, moving on. We got a lot to talk about. So I'm just, I'm gonna, we're gonna do this. Okay, Gucci. 
hello, I recently did that video and it was like trying on a ton of Gucci all at once. And it was just like luxury, 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 luxury. I will be sure to link below all corresponding videos for you guys. Um, but this was a really interesting try on. There were items that I was so happy to discover. And the number one that I have been reaching for over and over and over is actually the same product that I fell in love with from Gucci many years before making the last video that I made, and that's the bronzer. Whatever they did with this bronzer called Caribbean Ochre, made in Italy, they did right, man. I'm, it's good for 30 months. I'm gonna be so bronzed. I'll probably hit pan on this one. I love this. I just, I think it's really hard to screw up this bronzer. And that's what I look for in a lot of makeup. I look for performance, longevity, how it wears, but also upon application. Am I gonna mess my face up? Is this gonna be blotchy, choppy, not enough pigment, too much pigment? Like I'm hard to please, I get that. But when I find the stuff that works, I am all about sharing and raving and just like, mm, like loving on that particular item. This is so, oh my gosh, and even the compact is like, I'm so fabulous with my Gucci logo. Oh, it's so pretty. You're nice. Okay. Uh, from Gucci, what I do not like, this waste of a time foundation. It just does not do a lot. And I think for the price, you'd be better off getting a tinted moisturizer, a more sheer foundation from the drugstore. This just did not do it. Made me a little greasy. And I tried it a few times after that video because I was like, gosh, dang it. I spent so much money on this. Like, let's see if this works and maybe I'll give it to my mom. Maybe it's just not for my skin type. But overall, I just felt like it was so overpriced. And like, I was having to think really hard of like, who would this be great for? And like, I just had so many other recommendations in my brain that topped this that were not as expensive that I'm like, yeah, I really, really, really don't like that one. Okay, from NARS, they have a palette that has wandered off, grown legs, ran away from home. Um, all the good makeup does that because I get ready here and I also get ready in my bathroom. So things kind of like, <laughs> run away from the studio. Uh, and that's when it's true love, when it like makes its way into my actual home. So NARS has a palette. I'm gonna put an insert in here for you guys. And what I love about it, it's a newer launch. It has the capability to contour, set, um, you can do a little brightening. You can use the powders in the brow. They're just so beautifully neutral and they work together so gorgeously. I'm gonna sneeze. Oh my God, that was the biggest false alarm ever. Wow. All I was thinking about was little Miss Ava. Ava did my makeup when she was six. She is going to be doing my makeup again soon, I hope, because she was like, hey, you should have seven-year-old does my makeup and then eight-year-old does my makeup and it'll be the same kid the whole time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you have my heart. You are the cutest. So she was over and she was like, anytime you have to sneeze, just do this and you won't sneeze. What was I talking about before I had to sneeze? And it was a false alarm. I was talking about a shadow palette from NARS. So NARS, ooh, is this, did I find it? Ah, I found, oh my God, wow, hello. It was like on my desk. Pray for my brain right now. So this is the palette that I'm talking about. How beautiful, right? So these two right here, I actually will contour highlight with. You have some gorgeous shades that are of course more warm toned, but they're not like a loud, like in your face, bright orange or anything like that. The whole thing feels very, very neutral. I use this one for liner in the brow. Um, these metallics right here are so just nice. They sit on the lid beautifully without gripping to any lines on the lid. You can put them on with a brush, dry, wet, with your fingertip, whatever. And the wear time on these shades is great. I like the size of the palette. This is called the Skin Deep, and it is technically an eye palette, but I use it for so much more. Powder is powder, use it how you wish, and just kind of explore makeup that way. Sometimes that's a really fun thing to do, even taking like an eyeshadow and using it as your highlighter, or a matte shadow using it as your contour, you can totally do that. Um, now from NARS, what I don't like, this will shock people, this will be like, I, I can hear the comments. Um, I'm not, the biggest blush fan from NARS. 
And like, that's one of the items that they sell. Like it's a dominant centerpiece of the brand. Orgasm is a blush that I think there's some crazy number of one being sold like every second globally, something crazy like that. Um, and I remember that was one item that I saved up for. Like I would go visit it at Sephora and I'd be like, gosh, you're beautiful. Can't wait till you're mine. I heard JLo wears you. I'll be back someday. And like I saved up and I bought it and I loved it because I was like, I love the idea of it. And then I started using Wet n Wild Pearlescent Pink, which they've discontinued. Does anybody have another dupe for orgasm? Because for some reason, the NARS formula gets very choppy on my skin. I love the color of NARS Orgasm, but the texture of the powders just always has been a bit difficult to blend. And it's like, I wanna like it, but I finally arrived at the idea that things do work differently for different people, different skin types, and even a very popular item won't work for everyone. So for me, blushes, I typically love drugstore. That's just, that's just me. So NARS blush, not the absolute best in my book. What is the absolute best in my book? That I wore on my wedding day, you guys. This is from Natasha Denona. Her eyeshadow palettes are just really, really well done. The formula does not swatch well. That's something that I always find really, really interesting is I will try to do live swatches whenever she comes out with a new palette and they don't swatch well. And it always makes me think that yes, you can get a color idea of what the tone is and how things look built up. But with shadows, sometimes you really just have to like see how it performs on the eye, how it wears and it's more than just a swatch. People who understand her formula and wear it and love it, they, they get it. They know that there's something so special here. They're talc free, they're very smooth, there's minimal kickback. The pigmentation is just so even. It's hard to look patchy wearing her shadows. The metallics do have a lot of fallout, some of them but you have such glimmery, just like beauty in these shadows. And she has so many different color stories. The more recent one, the Sunrise palette is something that I'm so into. I love it so, so much. Those tones are beautiful. I'll link another video below where I try it on and it was such a good makeup day. Uh, so yes, shadows from Natasha Denona are the very, very best in her range. What is not the very best and what's sad is because initially it will trick you into being like, ooh, ah, wow. But what is not the very, very best are these crystal top coats. This one's a little more new and you'll see it's fine. You'll be like, oh my gosh, Tati, what are you talking about? That is beautiful. It is. But I have had to get rid of maybe six of these and they are not cheap and they dry out quickly. If you don't completely tighten up the lid very quickly after using it, it will dry out and it will just become hard as a brick and you cannot pick up much pigment at all. I will go back in and try to dampen it and like reuse it that way, but you can't get the same effect as you originally did. So I feel like this is one of the newer shades and maybe they've added just a little more oil to the formula because this does feel a little bit smoother. This is metal bronze, but a lot of her range is phenomenal. This is the one item that I just kind of collected a bunch of them up and I'm like, goodbye, I loved you at first and you turned your filthy back on me. Um, so just be warned, they don't last a very, very, very long time. You're better to spend your money on her phenomenal palettes. Okay, moving right along, Hourglass. This is just magic, you guys. I'm gonna put some like all over my face right now. This is the ambient powder. This is, I would say, one of their iconic Hall of Fame products that everybody loves. No matter who you are, you can use it as highlight. If you have drier skin, you can use it all over the face. Or if you're just into more of a like high shine like me, you can use it all over the face. I love how this softens up a more powdery finish to the face tricks the eye. So if you went with a heavy hand and you're like, oh crap, there's no time to turn back now. What do I do? You know what you do? You grab this, dust it all over the face 
and spritz your face with a little bit of setting mist and you will look brand new. It's a great technique to touch up by taking something mattifying and a small brush and hit the areas where you want to rid yourself of oil and then hit the face with this and mist. It works beautifully every single time. My favorite shade is Dim Light, which is this one right here. They have plenty of different shades. They always come out with these gorgeous uh, palettes right here for holiday and you get a blush bronzer you know, different setup depending on the year, but I love these powders so much. I can't do without them. I will always keep them on hand, and it's one of those items that's like, nope, love it, done. There's nothing that will replace that for me. It's the best. As far as what I don't like, I think a lot of you guys already know, the Vanish Liquid Foundation just did not work out for me. It was just too thick, and every time that I would use a tiny amount, it still did the same thing on me. It exaggerated lines, pores, settled, broke apart. It just didn't work for me, plain and simple. I love the Vanish Stick. They have like the best stick foundation in the game, but the liquid just did not get it done for me. Okay, let's move on to YSL. They have these lippies in this particular shade, number one of the Tattooage Matte Stains. Hands down, the very best red lip. It is intense. It's flattering. You have this beautiful edge right here. It allows you to line the lip first and then pull the color through and it stays put. I mean, this stains your lip, but not like in a, oh cute, I had like a cute little popsicle moment and like maybe sometimes that looks a little bit weird because it's like, does this look cute or does it just look like I'm sloppy? Like sometimes I feel like stains feel like that. This stain stains your lips like bright red. It's like you were born with like bright, this color red lips and you know you can wipe your mouth eat a burger whatever like it's still going to be there so the way that it dries down is so interesting that there's no glossy texture it's not even like it's a matte finish it's like it's your lips but temporarily they're transformed into this brighter color it's such a cool product i cannot wear this days in a row though because it will dry your lips out so be warned but it's worth it for a special event, best red liquid lip in the world. It is so good, I love it so, so much. The item I don't like from YSL is the Touche Claw. I feel like Scott will be disappointed in me if he hears me say that, because he's like, no, it's great, you can use it on top of powder, and I tried that, and I just, for me, I have my way of doing things, and I don't like the click, 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 I just don't like it, I don't like it. Anybody else? And I recently tried their newer, more full coverage Touche Claw, and it had like, like a breath of extra coverage. Like it was barely marginally giving me more coverage. And I'm like, really? I was expecting like some kind of touche miracle. Like I was, I wanted it to be like shape tape and like a clicky. I don't know. Maybe I went too hard with my wishes, but it just did not impress me. And yeah, moving right along. Something I am back into enjoying that I wore over and over and over and over and over is the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Long Wear because when it gets hot outside, this is it. It's so good, it is long wear, it does not settle, it does not exaggerate, it does not cling, it does not oxidize. It's just like, well maybe like a tiny bit, but not in a crazy way. It just makes your skin look gorgeous. I never have any irritation, clogged pores, None of that with this foundation. It comes in a pump, beautiful. Oh, I just love you. I'm sorry I neglected you for a minute, but I'm back in it. What I am not the biggest fan of from Laura Mercier, and you'll notice a lot of these items that I'm like, what I didn't like from Laura Mercier, what I didn't like from this, these items I don't have in front of me because I tried them and then they needed to leave because I don't want toxic makeup in here. Actually, all makeup's kind of toxic. What? Anyway, there is a powder that I have tried multiple times now, but the most memorable one was when James picked out my makeup. He went to Sephora and he's like, oh, this is the powder that you love. I know it, but it was the wrong one. The translucent setting powder I love, but then there is an HD type of a powder that just, 
Oh my gosh, it makes you look just weird. Like you just like dusted baby powder on your face and I am not into it at all. It made my dark circles feel exaggerated. It clung to wet creamy areas of my foundation and concealer and then made it look uneven. So that one, I don't know, I don't like it. It's not my game, it's not my thing. Okay, moving on, Fenty. I have like a top three with Fenty. I'm gonna try and not. <sighs> Mm, okay, Fussy and the highlighter are, they're my babies. I love them. Those are two of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite makeup items all together in the world. This is a new one. We're gonna focus on the new one just for a moment because I said in a recent video of underrated products that this deserves a lot more attention and love. And I believe that this is the fly liner and it's such a good liner to just stay put does not collect in that tear duct. I'm not gonna stay here long because I like ranted and rambled on about it for a minute in that video, I'll link it below. But from Fenty, what I don't like, and I've tried this a few times, you guys, I don't know why the formula does not work for me or why it's not completely smooth on me, but the bronzer that they just came out with just is uneven. I cannot get a good blend. It, does, it has too much pigment. There's something in here that just grips and it's not my favorite but Fenty has quickly become one of those brands that I really, really get excited about newer launches. When they first came out with product, their foundation was too drying on me and it made me a little bit hesitant toward their product line altogether. But I have to say, I'm so impressed with what they have been releasing and when they get the product perfect, it is superior to everything else. That highlighter is so, so gorgeous on every skin tone, every skin type, Fussy, the gloss that they have, amazing, so good. Can I tell you, this is like, I'll tell you, like, like, oh my gosh, I'm getting tongue tied saying this, because I feel like it should be a dirty secret. It's not, but I feel like people get very opinionated about drama channels. Uh, it's actually Sam from Here for the Tea that was the beauty guru in the moment because she recommends um, makeup sometimes. Uh, she's the one that got in my head to go and try <laughs> the Fenty gloss. So thank you, Sam. That was uh, all you're doing. And although I don't always encourage people to get sucked into drama and making other people's issues like a distraction from their own, um, we're all guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of being dramatic. Um, but she has good makeup recommendations too. So like there's also that anyway. Moving on. Okay, so we have from Bobbi Brown, the originator of the Shimmer Brick. This has been copied over and over and over, um, specifically by Physicians Formula. They came out with their version of it, which I really love. They don't sell the old school one anymore, I don't think, the one that I used like, you know, 20 years ago. Um, who's counting? Uh, anyway, these are gorgeous in the sense that you can do so much with them, use them on your eyes, use them as highlight, swirl them together, create like that custom color that you want. I love the ombre effect. And there are so many different shimmer bricks that they have and it always has like that lighter and then into deeper and different undertones. And it just works. It's just one of those products that's like, yep, you really got that right. It is so gorgeous. This just claims to do too much. And I'm like, I just don't understand what you're even doing. This is the Primer Plus Hydrating 3-in-1 Setting Spray. I have never been one to enjoy priming my face with a mist before makeup application. I prefer the actual lotion. This just did not do it. It was just like a hydrating mist claiming to do more. So I felt more let down. And it's just, it, I don't know, it's just like not as good as Fix Plus, which is my standard. And I don't like this one. Okay, you guys, that was a lot of products really quickly. I hope that you enjoyed this kind of a rundown, best, worst. Again, let me know if you want me to isolate in on just one brand and do this kind of a thing. Maybe try on some of the products in the mix or if you want me to do what I just did here, but drugstore or with more in the middle, you know, Tarte, Benefit, that kind of a thing, I can do another video, 10 best worst as well. So just let me know that you enjoy this and you want more of it. And I hope that you did. So there we have it. I love you guys so much. Go have a good one. Thanks for hanging out with me. Make sure that you subscribe, ring that bell, thumbs the video up, 
and I'm just wishing you guys a good one. All right, I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah.